Previously, I introduced you to the concept of voltage. Now I'll show you voltage notations because we want a more mathematical way to write and discuss and use voltages in equations. So let's start by introducing a resistor. I'll double click it and I will make it, uh, well, 20 ohms, I suppose. That's okay. 24. All right. I'll bring out a wire and connect it and a switch and connect it. I also want to introduce the concept of a node. A node is an electrical connection. So this wire up here constitutes one node because it's one electrical connection between elements. An element is a part of a circuit that has a specific function. So like this battery is an element, it's a voltage source. This resistor is an element that dissipates power. So we have one node here, it's an electrical connection. We also have two more nodes here. Uh, this wire and this switch constitute one node. They're connected to the bottom terminal of this battery, the negative terminal. Because that connection is broken and distinct from this connection, we can call them two separate nodes. But once we close the switch, they become one node. So we have two nodes, two unique nodes in the circuit, top and bottom. But once I open the switch, it breaks the electrical connection. And now we have three nodes, two on the bottom, one on the top. The other thing to note is that um, when we close this, now we can have electron flow. So the electrons are flowing counterclockwise. But the convention that we use, right, we say that electrons have negative charge, and current is the flow of charge. So if negative current is flowing counterclockwise, the conventional concept is that positive current flows counterclockwise. And these two concepts are completely equivalent. And so we generally favor talking about current rather than the actual flow of electrons. So I'll leave it with this picture the conventional picture. So now that we have two nodes, let's call the upper node A and the lower node B. We can measure the voltage of A relative to B, and that's 9 volts. So the way we write that mathematically is using double subscript notation. So I would put here V subscript AB equals 9 volts. So we have a double subscript voltage. Uh, in this case, it's VAB is 9 volts. That is to say that A is 9 volts higher than B. The other thing I want you to note is if I switch these, this is the same thing that we saw before. Now we're measuring VBA, right? Because it's the voltage of node B relative to node A. I could move either of these probes along any point on these two wires and you get the same reading. That's because each wire is one single node, or each electrical connection is one single node. So it doesn't matter whether I move my observation point here or here. If it's on the same node to the same reference, it's the same voltage. Now can you imagine what will happen if I put my observation probe on the same node as my reference? Well, it's all the same node, so it's all the same voltage. So the observation point relative to the reference point is zero volts. And I can, it doesn't matter, I can move anywhere along here, it's the same voltage, so uh, zero volts. And then same thing for this node right here. Move them both probes to that node, and zero volts. Now one thing will happen if I open the switch, I break the electrical connection, now these are two different nodes. And the function of this battery, it's a voltage source, its job is to make the node connected at its 
negative terminal nine volts lower than the node connected at its upper terminal. And so having broken this electrical connection, we have two separate nodes and they happen to be at nine volts apart. So there's a nine volt difference. And as you might expect, if I uh, swap them, now it's a negative nine volt difference. So that's the meaning of a double subscript voltage.